Okay, so we've been talking about uh, weight distributions. Okay, and uh, here's the definition. If you have an NK code, weight distribution is usually represented as a bivariate polynomial, and there are various ways of writing it. Uh, one is to say it's about x power and minus i, y power i, and what is a i? a is the number of code words number of code words with weight i. Okay. So another nice succinct representation for the same thing is uh, summation over all code words x power n minus weight of u y power weight of u ok and uh, you might wonder why do you need uh, bivariate polynomials for just representing a vector of weights uh, so the nice uh, notion is that uh, this McWilliams identity which states that the weight distribution of the dual is given by this formula. Okay, so when you write it uh, in terms of x comma y instead of x, you put x plus y instead of y, you put x minus y. Then divide by size of the code, you magically get the weight distribution of the dual. Okay, so this is called the McWilliams identity, and we were proving it in the last class. We went kind of halfway through the proof and uh, hopefully we will finish the proof today and I think that is pretty much all that we will do in this class. Is this okay? Any questions? Did any, anybody try the proof? No? No time? You are too busy? Okay. Nobody even looked at it? No? Okay. So, so I am going to give you a chance to look at it today. Okay. Right. So what is the, what is the, what is the main idea on the proof? There is a lemma that we use, right? What is the lemma? summation minus 1 power u dot v when u is over a code and v is some arbitrary n bit vector the summation has a very good behavior what is the behavior of the summation is size of c if v belongs to sorry v belongs to c part and the 0 else Okay, so this is a quite a powerful uh, result, and this is uh, something I didn't prove very clearly in the last class, but it's, I said it's kind of clear why this is true, and there are lots of uh, more sophisticated mathematical descriptions of this later on. If you do some group algebra and all, you might see some things. But this is this is some very basic fact which we can be happy with. Okay, so this is something we're going to use, and how do we use this in the proof of Mathewian identity? Okay, so we started with this summation. Okay, so this is what this is the weight distribution of the of what of the dual code, right? So this is the weight distribution of the dual code. I started with this, and then I said. I am going to sum over, did I put u or v here, maybe I put v here, v, ok, ok, and then I said, what is u, which is v, it's fine, ok, and then I said, I will add over, yeah, of course it does not matter, <laughs> it is really, but I just want to be consistent with what I did in the last class, otherwise it just will get in trouble. I added, I wanted to add over all the vectors in the n bit vector space, instead of doing just so C, C part and the same expression, but 
but then we wanted to adjust it, right? So what is the adjustment we're going to do? We're going to sum over u and c minus one power u dot v, and then we'll have to divide by size of c. So put a one over size of c. Okay, and then I. And then what did I do? I went from, I interchanged the order of the summation and I said 1 over psi c, sum over u and c, what? Sum over v in 0, 1 and minus 1 power u dot v, x power n minus y to v, y power y to v. All right. Okay. So what's the goal? The goal is to show that this is going to be equal to x plus y power n minus y of u. Yeah. All right. So you're going to start and tell me how to do it. I'm not going to do it for you. Okay. So let's see. Take an attempt at it. All the possible ways in which we can get this particular coefficient. So, one from particular. the answer, we know that it has to be. <laughs> <laughs> you want to work that? We know the form in which it should be from the answer, and we somehow try to combine it. Why don't you try it? Don't. <laughs> Let's see if we get somewhere. <laughs> okay, Vignesh, just hold on one minute before you try. <laughs> we will give you a hint, okay? So, one way of doing it, which is the. Which I think it's the way I know. <laughs> the other way is. I don't know that way. Okay, so what we do is the following. So you set u to be, let's say u1, u2, u1. Okay, and v to be, v1, v2, v1. Okay, and uh, okay. So normally when we when we when we write it like this, each of these things is a bit, right? 0 or 1, okay. but then this weight of v is a bit troubling, okay. how do you write weight of v in terms of bits, it's number of non-zero positions, but I want to write it using vi, and if I do not write using vi, the weight of v is not going to simplify very nicely for me, okay. Yeah, so you have to now do this dual look at v, okay. the vi I will on the one hand say is a bit 0 or 1 operations are modulo 2, on the other hand I will also kind of view it as an integer okay, for the powers, okay, just to look at the powers. I will view it as an integer. So when I do that, that dual view, it will kind of give me a nice expression. It will let me see how to do the manipulation. Okay, right? So what I can do is I can write weight of v, basically summation v i. Okay. So again, I'll put a star here to show that this is a v i equality. Okay. On the one hand, you are thinking of v as a vector with bits. Everything should be modular two, right? So there's no question of two or three or anything else in the area. But I'm going to add it up like this and use it as a convenient tool in the simplification. There's nothing wrong in it. Okay, it'll be fine. But it's just that I'm writing it that. Well, okay. So once you do that, it turns out whatever bracketed expression I have, I can write it in this form. Okay, I put n summations. V one equals e1 equals 0 to 1, e2 equals 0 to 1, vn equals 0 to 1. Okay, so again, remember when I say 0 to 1, what does it mean? It's just like the integer 0 and 1. It takes one, at one point, it, it takes value 0 as well as 1. I have to sum over those two possibilities. Then I write minus 1 power what? u1 v1 plus u2 v2 plus so on to un. Pm. Okay. So and then what am I going to do? X power. Okay. So yeah, it's going to be n minus summation i equals one to n vi y power summation i equals one to n vi. Okay. So you notice here that this will factor. Okay. I can write this as a product of n things, each thing depending only on the i thing, i equals 1, i equals 2, etc. So, how do we do that? Let us do that next. 
So we'll have the same summation going along here. End of one. Okay, so similar over the lecture and uh, the lecture by Professor Nagendra, I don't know if you know. He was talking about how students today cannot, don't like manipulating expressions. They cannot manipulate expressions that are complex enough. You know, they just immediately get tired. They know they want everything to be nice, quick answers, quickly type it in MATLAB or Mathematica or something like that. So this looks like a ready-made case for that. I'm sure I can ask you to do it, but none of you will put pencil to paper and try to, do, to try to simplify this. So I'm doing it myself. Okay. So let's write product i equals one to n. What should I write here? Minus one power u i d i. Okay. And then x power. Yeah, I can write 1 minus v, right? So that's the nice uh, thing about just treating it as a uh, bit present. So the product, when I multiply all of them together, I'll get back this expression. Okay? With sigma? No, I mean, sigma is going. Ah. Okay. And you put sigma v i equal to 0 to 1 of this term, the whole thing product i equal to 1. You want to take the summation inside. Yeah, we have to do it, but then you have to be sure that that's possible, right? Can you take products and summation outside? Is it is it commutative that way? Yeah. Seems complicated, right? Can I take this product outside and summation inside? That's the question. It turns out it's, you can do it. That's because this is a special situation. Okay, so always it's not true that the product will come out and the summation will go in. It's not true. With summations, you can exchange. Yeah, so here the way the product is coming and all possible cases are there, that's the important thing. So suppose, so, let, so there's an easy way to kind of justify this by example and let me try that for you. So if you have A0, A1 plus, uh, no A0, let's, let me say it's out, it's out, it's out. So if you have two variables, uh, four variables, let's say A0, A1, B0, B1, okay, and then you take the sum of all possible products two at a time. So you have A0, uh, B0 plus A0 B1 plus A1 B0 plus A1 B1. Okay. Suppose you have a product like this. This is the same as A0 plus A1 times B0 plus B1. You see that? Because all possible products are showing up in this product term. So if you look at each term, it contains all the possible products of these n variables and each of those n variables is something, it's, it's a little bit more complicated than before but each of the n variables is minus 1 power u i v i x power 1 minus v i y power v i. Call this guy as a i. Okay, did I get that right? Yeah, so I think you should be, I should be a little bit more careful. So, yeah, 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 let me not do that, okay. Anyway, so, yeah, so, so this minus 1 complicates things a little bit. So, you have to worry about how the minus 1 is split but anyway, so you, if you want you can group it along with one of them. Okay, take that as a take this as B kind of thing and then you will get all these all possible products will show up. So once you have all possible products showing up, you can group them two at a time or as many uh, possible values as you have at a time and then write it as a product like this. Then all possible products will anyway also come by the same by the same token. Okay. So if you are not convinced, write out this possibility. Okay. So we have A0, A1, B0, B1, C0, C1. Okay. So you will have eight different terms showing up with three terms, right, if you look at this term A0 plus A1 times B0 plus B1 times C0 plus C1, you will get what, eight different terms and that will be all possible products of A, B, C with whatever coefficient. So all possible products summed up of A, B, C is the same as the sums multiplying, okay. So this is one peculiar situation that the product will actually come out, okay. So usually it does not happen, product comes out in one, in this particular situation. Okay. So, it turns out this guy can be written as product i equals 1 to n and you put sigma v a equals 0 to 1. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm saying here sigma v a equals 0 to 1 or minus yeah. 1 power u a v a x power 1 minus v a. Yeah, so you have to put v a equal to 0 here and then v a equal to 1 here and add the two terms. Is that okay? So, when I put v a equal to 0 here, what do I get? x. Then if we put v a equal to 1 here, what will I get? Depends on y. Minus 1 power y times y. Yeah, so that's what you get. Is that okay? 
Why am I not feeling very good about this answer? Yeah, I think that's it. I think that's it. That's it. So this is the product. Okay. So now I want to bring in weight of u. Okay. So in this product, there are n terms. How many of them will be x plus y, and how many of them will be x minus y? Yeah. Whenever u is zero, I get a x plus y, and whenever u is one, I get a x minus y. So if you do that, you see you get without too much problem. So this is equal to x plus y raised to the power n minus y of u, and y raised to the power x minus y. Okay, and that's what I wanted to show. Okay, so that's the end of the proof. Uh, done this way, it seems like major magic, but there are some sophisticated, like I said, more fancy uh, group character arguments that will that will make it look a little bit more mundane. But uh, but nevertheless, the first time I saw it, I was quite impressed with this identity. Okay, I thought it was a really cool identity relating the uh, the the. the, the in a way, it relates every code word, some property of every code word of C to every some property of every code word of C prime, right? C prime. It says if you have so many code words of this much weight in C, there should be some so many code words of so much weight in C prime also. Okay, so that's a very strong connection between the code and its dual, and it's not uh, it's not very obvious at all. Okay, so anyway, so this was uh, named after Florence McWilliams, which is one of the one of the preeminent coding theorists from quite a while back. Lots of interesting stories about her also. It's no time to delve into stories, but that's the idea. Okay, so that's the that's the result. So we'll do a QED and finish that proof. Okay, so let's uh, let's do a couple of examples to check uh, how that will work. Or I think I, I did this example maybe uh, for the repetition code. If you take n one repetition code. The C is the K. It's part n plus y part n, right? And so, if you go to the dual, dual should have from our result, you know, it should be equal to x plus y part n plus x minus y part n by 2. Okay? And we know that is correct because the dual is what? n comma n minus 1 comma 2 even weight code, right? It has all the code words of even weight and this summation clearly will give you that. Okay, so anytime you have uh, y power i, i being odd, that will cancel with the other term in the uh, summation. Only the even guys will come and the division, division by 2 takes you back to the actual weight. Okay, so this is the same as i even into 5 x power n minus i y power. Is it okay? All right, so that gives you uh, the dual, and I think there was uh, there was this curious little code that we had, the 6-3 code that I had. Okay, so there was a 6-3 code, and what is the weight distribution? What x bar n plus uh, four x bar no x bar six? Let's see, specific four x bar three y bar three. Am I right? Do you remember this? And then 3 x power 4 x squared, is that right? Okay. And uh, we saw that the dual also had the same weight distribution. Right? Dual also had the same or the opposite? Exact same, right? So it's a curious little polynomial here. Okay, so what is the property of this polynomial? You do the transformation x plus y, x minus y, and then divide by 8, what do you get? You get the same polynomial. Okay. Let's see if you can check that. I'm sure it's to be true, but I think it's an interesting thing to check. It's, it gives you something, there are some invariant theories about polynomials, if at all you learn about them later on, you might, you might remind, I mean, at that point you might remind yourself that you saw this once before in a more benign context. Okay? So this is a very powerful, powerful notion. So let's let's do that. Let's do what we see at x plus y minus minus y. Let's see what happens. 3? Oh, sorry. sorry. Okay. N minus i, right? So there are four code words of weight three and three code words of weight four. Okay, so it's a curious little uh, depending on your skill with this kind of algebra, you might be able to do it very quickly or 
you can just take your time with it. Doesn't matter, but I want you to check it. I think it's a nice little result that if you have like a nine standard niece or a view or someone and you want to impress them, you can ask them to try this. Some more complex things you can do also, but this is a nice little algebra problem. nice you don't have a pen okay First thing you should do is pull the x plus y plus whole square outside. Okay? And then in the next two terms, pull x minus y plus 3 outside. And slowly do step by simplification like that. Don't try to expand each term and then add up. You can also do that, it's not too painful, but that might be smarter ways of doing it. So. Okay, so let me try this. So I'm going to pull x plus y square times x minus y r3 out from here. So I'm going to get 4x plus 4y. What? Plus 3x minus 3y. Is that right? Will I get that? All of you are absorbed in your own calculation. Okay, go ahead and do that. <laughs> I'm going to do it on, on the screen without any commentary so that we are not distracted so in case in case we get into trouble with I guess even this is not a very nice Converts. Yes, yes, good. 
any did you observe something which you thought was that made this this particular for this particular polynomial was it any simpler because of any smart observation or no it's just one of those identities right it's like saying mug up all these formulae with uh, x and y we can mug up a new formula now right x plus y plus 6 plus 4x plus 5 for 3 and x minus y gives you this implication okay anyway i mean these are not there are uh, much bigger theories like i said this is idea called invariant theory which captures all these things very well that's uh, something okay so so like i said what is the weight distribution useful for it's useful of course in figuring out probability of error detection probability of error correction sometimes so like i said from from a code space point of view geometry point of view if you're sitting at a code word the weight distribution tells you how many code words are at what distance away okay so in a way if if you're transmitting a code word the error vector that gets added can push you in so many different directions towards so many different code words. So that that's the nice thing about weight distribution. But having said that, I should say, but for most codes that we know today, weight distribution is not that well known. For each element codes, it turns out weight distributions are exactly known. For any MDS code, weight distributions are known very exactly. But for many codes like BCH codes, Reed Muller codes, there are lots of weight distribution problems that are open. Okay. So it's it's not but once again I should say these are not very hard problems today. Were very classical coding theory problems. People have moved on to other kind of problems in coding theory, but but nevertheless, there is still like dedicated groups of people who keep plugging away at it. You know, when they suddenly come up with a weight distribution of a BCH code, which is so far unknown. So, so it's somewhat somewhat interesting uh, once in a while to study. Okay, so that's uh, that's all I wanted to say about weight distributions. Okay, so let me see. If, uh, yeah, I think that's it. Nothing more. Uh, I wanted to add. Yeah, I think maybe maybe we'll do this uh, example. Uh, the so eight four four read Muller code, right? We have the rate 844 read Muller code. Uh, one nice property for this code is, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, it's self dual, but it also, I think, it has one code word of weight 0 and all the other code words of weight 4, I think. So it has 15 code words of weight 4 and one code word of weight 0. Is that correct? Does it sound believable to you? Okay. Huh? We did the checking yesterday, right? Did we do that? Yeah, yeah. So it will be okay. Okay, right? For the Hamming code, we did. We saw that for the Hamming code, it had some properties and the same, same thing. So let's look at the weight distribution. It's going to be x power 8 plus 15 x power 4 y power 4. You also know that it's self dual. Okay? So what should happen if I do the? I should get the exact same thing. Okay, so let's see if we can check that. Maybe it's maybe it's possible to check that. So if you do the transformation, WC of x plus y comma x minus y, what is it going to be? X plus y power eight plus fifteen. X plus y power four. X minus y power four. Any ideas? Any ideas? Do you think you can simplify this? Okay. Can this be equal to? You think it's equal to this? Does that sound believable? It's believable, right? So if you look at x bar eight. You look at the x bar 8 term, the 16 is a coefficient. It's not, it's not too bad. And if you look at the y bar 8 term, what's happening? Hmm? Can be the same. Okay. Then something is wrong in this. 
What did I make a mistake? So I guess this is not true for the 844 code. Hmm. It's 3 2, it's 3 1, right? So it's a 3 comma 1. Maybe it's not all 15. Maybe it's like. Does it have 4 and. I think it has 8 also. Right? I think it's 14 and then it has YPAR 8. It has the all 1's code word, no? That's there in the. The read molar code has the all 1's code word also, right? Then it also has 6. Does it have 6? Yeah, I don't, I don't have 6. Minimum distance is 4. Okay? So it will only have 0, 4, and 8. It can't. But it will have 8 also. Right? I think 8 is the mistake. Okay? So I think it's 14. Sorry for that. And then you have the white R8. Right? Right? If you have an 8, 4, 4, and minimum distance 4, A0 has to be 1. A1, A2, A3 has to be 0. A4 has to be something. So A5, A6, A7 also has to be 0. If you have the all, all, all ones code word, I think all ones is there in read Muller code. It's there. So I guess that has to be true. Okay, so there's a mistake here. So of course you have a x minus y power 8. Okay, okay that will work. Now, now it will work. But something <laughs> seriously wrong. Sorry, 14. Yeah. yeah right. Okay. So. Yeah, I was hoping, yeah, this this can this can be equal. Okay, so if you look at the first and the last term, you combine it, right? You get only the even power terms. And that that from there you can, I mean, it's not too bad. From there, okay, so you can simplify if you like. All right. Okay, but anyway, I mean, this is again a neat looking. Identity that we have. I want uh, just trying to see if there's a quick way of seeing this result. Is this correct? Does it seem correct? But 3 1 code is it self dual? It is self dual, no? We have the. Uh, it comes out to this. Okay, I think I have the expression for wrong. <laughs> I need a 14 and plus the. Okay, so this has to work out. Maybe that's a smart way of seeing it, but uh, yeah, I think it's just it's an interesting maybe curious little fact. Okay, so 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 any other like any other code? I'm just trying to see if there's some other code which is very neat and. Uh, Interesting. So I think it's it's okay. I think we'll just uh, leave it at this. It should be fine. Okay. So, sorry. Hmm. Hmm. What are the angles? Yeah, I mean, so I mean, he's asking me some question about how, how the polynomial behaves when x and y is rotated. You're, you're viewing the x plus y, x minus y as a rotation. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, there's also this uh, division by root 2. I think, I mean, we have to be careful about these things, but yeah, these polynomials have that property. If you rotate, keep rotating further and further, this only for the self dual codes, not always. When you have self dual codes, if you keep rotating further and further, you keep doing the same thing over and over. What angles? Any other angle you put, you won't get this. But there could be polynomials which satisfy those other angles also. I don't know. I think there is. 
Yeah, I think there are higher degrees. Okay, so I think at this point in the course we have to decide what we want to do. There's some about uh, about eight lectures left, I think. Okay, and then I think the last uh, two three classes I want to do problems, and maybe give you one more assignment also. So, so that's there, and we have some five six lectures left, and uh, we have to kind of make up our mind as to what to do. Okay, so uh, so what I'm going to do. Now is we'll, I'll stop the recording for now. So that this is not there, and then we can talk about what we can do. And then we'll decide.